Well, in my opinion, Alex is mashed potatoes. He is just, yeah, you know, he's good. He's nice to look at. There's some butter there. But is, is there any bacon? No. Is there any, any, any cheese on these potatoes? No, it's just good old fashioned mashed potatoes. And I'm like, is it me? Is it me or is he kind of a snooze? And there's nothing wrong with good guys. But am I going to remember this guy tomorrow? No. Yeah. Is he someone I'm going to be like, oh, that guy was great? No. Welcome to the Novel Universe with your hostesses, Ashley and Dawn. We rate and review the newest and most buzzworthy books. We are true book club girls who don't always agree, but do enjoy a good book discussion. I'm Ashley, the fantasy architect. And I'm Dawn, the criticizer of books. Grab your favorite beverage and come and enjoy our universe. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Novel Universe with your hostesses, Ashley and Dawn. And today we are going to be kicking off June with our beach reads. So today we're going to be talking about People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so if you have not subscribed to our podcast channel, The Novel Universe, you can basically get all of our podcasts there, anywhere you get your podcasts from. You can also follow us on Instagram, The Novel Universe. And you can also now follow us on BookTube for our thoughts as to what we think about our books. And usually we break things up with a summary, our rating, and then we go into a non-spoiler discussion. And then we will let you know when we'll spoil things because, let's be honest, it is a book club talk. We want to make sure that we are hitting on all the points that need to be discussed. Mm -hmm. So, without further ado people we meet on vacation by emily henry two best friends 10 summer trips one last chance to fall in love poppy and alex alex and poppy they have nothing in common she's a wild child and he wears khakis she has an insatiable wanderlust and he prefers to stay home with a book and somehow ever since a faithful car share home from college many years ago they are the very best of friends for most of the year, they live far apart. She's in New York City, and he's in their small town, small hometown. But every summer for a decade, they have taken one glorious week of vacation together until two years ago when they ruined everything. They haven't spoken since. Poppy has everything she should want, but is stuck in a rut. When someone asks when she has last really and happy, she knows without a doubt is on that ill-fated final trip with Alex. And so she just decides to get her best friend to take one more vacation together and lay everything on the table and make it all right. But I'm not going to say any more because I feel like... That's a lot. <laughs> You're like... Eh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> all right. So, Dawn, what did you rate this book? I gave it a 375. <laughs> okay. I gave it a 425. Okay. Which is a reversal from last week because if you guys know, Ashley poo pooed all over last week's <laughs> book. Don was like, well, I wasn't that bad. <laughs> so, and, okay, well, I'd be curious to hear your 375. I think I know some reasons why, though. We probably have the same reasons, but it probably affected me more than you. This is very true. Yeah. Very true. All right. So now we're going to get into our dislikes. So for me, this book follows Alex and Poppy, right, and their friendship. And so there's present day that we are in. And then we will go back in time, like 10 years to each of the trips that they took in order to find out what in the world caused such a rift between this glorious friendship. And those times when we would travel back to the summer trips of whether it was year seven, year six, year nine, whatever it was, they were overly descriptive in unnecessary information. They were just, it's like info dumping. 
all over the place. Like, okay. at least for the good, like, three or four pages of us getting back into the trip, I was like, I don't need to know about the trees. This isn't solving anything for me. I don't need to know about the child screaming on the airplane. Like, this doesn't help move this story along at all. So that was, like, one of my biggest pet peeves with this book is that those transitions back into time were really just long-winded it was like listening to someone tell a story and you're like I've completely lost interest because you've told me like even like the small speck of dirt on your sock as you've walked through here <laughs> and I don't need all of that information okay for me that, that was, was my one of my things that was not any of my dislikes but I see where you're coming from okay Okay. I don't even I don't think it what you have to say. <laughs> I know. Uh, my biggest dislike is the title of the book did not match the book. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's called The People We Meet on Vacation. And as I'm reading the book, it's becoming abundantly clear that they're not meeting anybody while they're on vacation. So at first I thought it was just a play on words. And so they're just kind of meeting themselves over again and every location they're rediscovering themselves until you get to the very end and this is not a spoiler but poppy is like i i like when we meet new people that makes me happy and i'm like but you don't you didn't meet anybody and even if they did it was those people were not significant to their lives like if you're yeah. going to if you're going to have a travel book and i i haven't read a travel book but i've watched travel movies into the wild comes into my mm -hmm. mind where when he's traveling and he's meeting people these people are impacting him somehow somehow and the people that they meet on vacation did not not even the guy in canada and he was probably the biggest person that they met on vacation so yes it tied back to him at one point for one small little yeah. part and i was like oh okay is there more people and then that was it but that was it <laughs> But you would think a, a guy like him would have had some sort of druggy, druggy theories about life or love. No, no, it, it, he, he impacted nothing to the story. And it wouldn't have mattered if she hadn't have made this big proclamation at the end. And if this book had not have been titled People We Meet on Vacation. I kept waiting for these um, awesome people that they were going to meet on vacation and I never met them. So mm -hmm. that right there was a huge star drop unfortunately mm -hmm. yeah now i hear what you're saying like the, the the title did not coincide with the book itself it was one sentence where it addresses it because it was like oh well i should probably connect this together maybe and i feel like in a lot of other books that we've read you can see why it's titled that way fairly quickly so yeah i agree I agree. Uh, my next, like, it's not it's not big dislike. It, these are all very minor for me in particular. The one that I talked about was pretty big, and then yours, I can definitely um, attest to that one as well. But Poppy's friends and her boss, in the very minor characters in this book, just did not hold weight enough for me that I didn't care about them, and they. This book is definitely about Alex and Poppy and, like, their families a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we were supposed to be um, sympathetic towards her boss um, in some other areas, which we can talk about in, you know, spoiler. And, like, her friend Rachel is just, like, she's this famous blogger and she's got this whole entire life. But really deep down, all she wants to do is save puppies. Like, that's great. But... Uh, there was just no weight to her, to, to, to their characters, to really hold them, to help hold the main characters through. Yeah, I agree. So I didn't even really think about them at all. Like, especially Rachel, and I, I don't like people like Rachel, who they have this fabulous blog or vlog or Insta whatever, and they're these huge influencers, and all they do is shit all over their followers. Why don't mm -hmm. you go listen to what I have to say? It's so stupid. Oh, I'm not even talking about anything significant. Then why do I, it? I, I hate know. when people do that. Uh, 
My favorite is the line where she's like, you see this right here? This is what I would wear all day, but no, I have to dress up for my followers. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't have to do that. You can get a job at a dog rescue and fulfill your life. You won't make as much, but it's you'll be happy. Exactly. <laughs> I hated that. Yeah. But that was not on my list. What this is fun. <laughs> we haven't had similar things on our dislike list. I know. List. We usually have the same thing. I um, I actually was given this book a four right up until the end. I did not like the ending. I did not like the miscommunication. Mostly Alex. Actually, all Alex. And, yeah, I'll save it for the spoiler edition. But I thought it was a really cheesy rom-com ending. And I love the rom-com, but I didn't like this. And yeah, the last 50 pages, it totally dropped a quarter of a star. Hi. I have something to comment on about it after. Just because I'm curious if you read a certain part of the book. Okay. But I'll talk about it later. But yes. <laughs> Um, my last, like, dislike before I get into, like, little nitpicks, because I actually really did enjoy this book, and my things are quite, quite minor, uh, it was the last, the last 50 pages, the inability to communicate from Alex really bothered me, mm -hmm. because Alex is an intelligent person, he's not dumb, you know, yeah. he, he puts off this facade as, you know, um, I'm unapproachable, I'm the geeky teacher that knows all this information, you know, I have a really bad backstory where my mom died and I had to raise my whole entire family because it kind of crippled my dad and like all of these things. He's a really strong person, but for some reason, he can't talk to Poppy, <laughs> you know, or, or she can't talk to him and it's like, you guys have been friends for this long. You go really deep with each other on every other issue. Yep. But the fact that we're breaching this, like, friend zone, all of a sudden we just, you know, back it up a little bit. Nope, I don't want to go there because we're going to mess it up or whatnot. And it's like, I understand that. But at the same time, I feel like in real life, there's not so much of that, like, backing it up. No, nope. I don't know. But I didn't like that they had had a problem talking about their feelings to each other. Yeah. Yeah, we can get into that, into that in the spoiler mm -hmm. edition because I had that too. Okay. Um, the, the big moment. So books like this, they build up. Well, the, actually, that's not it. I'm lying. Um, that, that was kind of a dislike too where they build up this whatever happened in two years ago and it's like am I gonna be let down by it I kind of was but then there's another big moment which I'm not gonna say because of the spoiler I was not into it <laughs> I'll just keep it like that I'll just keep it like that <laughs> like that yeah yeah, that was uh, nitpick number one for me was the hidden reason why they were upset with each other or had parted ways. I was like, oh, well, then it, no, Ugh. like I, I didn't like it. And I will, t because I feel like it affected the moment that, that you're talking about. That whole reasoning why affected how our emotions were played out with the big moment, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't like that. I didn't think it was a good enough reason. No. <laughs> um, I have a nitpick. I think we're, it's nitpicking time. Nitpicking time. Nitpicking. Uh, I liked and disliked that Alex did not have a point of view. It was all her. And I felt like, like, it wouldn't have made sense for it to be all Poppy's point of view and then one chapter is Alex, but I hate when authors do that. So I'm glad she didn't. But at the same time, it's like, I really wish I had his point of view or at least there could have been a little bit more cues, context clues or something. Mm -hmm. Because I just felt like when it came to Alex, he made me so angry 
that I'm like, maybe if I had his point of view, I would understand him more. But from what we're getting as the reader, it was just not enough for me to accept his shitty miscommunication. Like, it was beyond ridiculous. Um, I have one Are you to nitpick? more nitpick. Hey. This is actually not a nitpick. This is a hot take. I have a hot take. This is new for me. Ah. Okay, so let me find the page. Um, Poppy is lamenting on something about her life as she has done this entire book. And I got the wrong page documented. Anyway, me. She's talking about how, you know, her life is woo-woo, whatever. And she's like, oh, and I'm doing some, some blah, 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 that people complain about millennials. Oh, this is what millennials do. I don't remember what page it's on. Uh, but I'm kind of, like I said, this is a hot take. I'm kind of over this people shitting on millennials. People shit on every generation. I am a Gen mm -hmm. Xer. Gen Xers are lazy. Gen Xers are stupid. Gen Xers are crybabies and whiny babies. Oh my God. They do it to every generation. Get over mm. yourself. Millennials. Sorry, Ashley's a millennial. Sorry. <laughs> Just made the cutoff. Get over yourself. <laughs> oh my God. Every no, generation it's, gets it. Yeah. No. It's just your It's turn. true. Like when that, that whole line happened, I was like, oh my gosh, like that doesn't apply to me at all. Like I'm a successful person for being a millennial and no, I don't mooch off of people to just get what I want, nor do I try to do things the easy way. All of this stuff. No, <laughs> I'm actually a really hardworking person. <laughs> oh my goodness. Apparently I'm not. <sighs> anyway. That's all I got. <laughs> okay, so... My first like with this book is that this is an ideal book that I would bring to a beach. Mm -hmm. Ideal book I would bring to a beach. You could sit all day and read this book in one day if you wanted to. It is light. It is airy. Yes, there are some flaws in some of the storytelling and communication like we talked about. But I very much so could look past all of that because... When I go to the beach, I don't want to be sitting here trying to figure out 17 different names that coincide with a realm and all this other stuff. Or nor do I want to be reading some, you know, super erotic book at the beach either. <laughs> Whatever you name it, uh, this is something that I would recommend to a friend who wants just a nice light and airy beach read. I like the nonlinear plot. I'm always a sucker for a nonlinear plot. And I mm -hmm. thought that it was done well. Uh, it made me really anticipate what happened two summers ago. Uh, I like that she dropped, like she would be in the current summer and then she would recall something back and we kind of go back to a different summer. So I do think a, no a nonlinear plot makes a book a little bit more interesting because particularly with this book, because we kind of see her grow throughout the book instead of it being she is like I'm so unhappy with my job and then her friends are like well this is what you need to do and her boss is like this is what you need to do and then we watch her do all these things and make all these mistakes finally at the end she grows no she kind of is like she's kind of self-aware throughout the entire book and she'll say it this is why I'm feeling this way I feel this way about him this isn't healthy all through the book so I really did like that we saw her growth throughout the whole book and didn't have to wait she, there was some growth at the end, but she was growing in more places as the book went on. Yeah. And more without help either. Yeah. Like she did get to a point where she did need help, you know, and I, I liked that because it's like, you know, as, as Poppy was entering this world from a really bad childhood, you know, and she's been running away from life and just trying to find a place that she feels accepted and happy she gets to a point where she really has to confront those issues and it's not always pretty. Like you can't just be like, okay, well I'm done with that for now. So I'm going to drop you on the side. See you later. I don't really prefer that anymore. It's she, she gets to a point where she does grow and it's like, oh, well you just had an adult moment where you had to kind of confront some past things in order to deal with how you're going to move forward in your present. So that part I did. I did really like as well. Um, I 
I laughed so hard at this book to the point where my husband asked what was so funny. And so I would read him some of the lines from the book. And his comment to me was, is she a comedian? Because that, that's rather witty. So, like, when there would be the bantering back and forth between Poppy and Alex, because Poppy is a very, like, in-your-face person. She doesn't really sugarcoat anything. Mm-hmm. And so they're kind of just going on and on. Um, to reference, there's a part in the book where they're taking a trip or whatever. That's my life's just well. They're taking a trip. <laughs> and they rent this car and this car is is a lemon right it's got all these issues going on and yada 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 and so instead of being thoroughly angry they continue talking in like third person for the car uh it is aspires to be healthy um it aspires to have a working air conditioner and then poppy's reply is it aspires to not smell like butthole that's smoking a blunt (laughs) <laughs> just like dying in the car that's just one of the very <laughs> yeah references that are made and it's just it's so funny so funny i was laughing i was so excited to be reading the storyline because i felt their pain at the same time yeah it's it, it was their little in <laughs> excuse me it was their little inside jokes uh so yeah they had a lot of inside jokes and i did like that i thought the inside jokes were really funny I did like the Aspire one. I also like the, it speaks to me. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, there were, they had several inside jokes, but I think the Aspire and the, it speaks to me were the, the best ones. And there were times where I was laughing out loud. And then it was kind of sad when, um, this was after their, their two year fallout. And she says, it speaks to me. And he didn't acknowledge it. And I was like, oh, devastation. I almost cried because I, he didn't get it. And I was like, oh, man. Oh, yeah. I agree 100%. That part made me so unhappy that he didn't, like, <sighs> revel in that same joy as her. I'm like, that's like your guys' whole entire banter. Like, yeah. no. <sighs> Uh, let's see. I have another one and I dropped my notes. Sorry, guys. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So if you didn't, guys, if you guys did not know, um, Emily Henry, the author of this book, actually wrote this book after Harry Met Sally. It was a take on Harry Met Sally. And I, after reading that towards the end, I was like, oh, I get it. I get it now. Just the, the structure of the story, some of the things that Alex does, uh, with Poppy, I'm just like, oh, okay, I can, I can get this. That was kind of nice because I don't think we've read something like that before, at all. Because it wasn't the same, but it was a take on Harry Met Sally. Yeah. Let's see, do you have any other likes? Speaking of when Harry Met Sally, I think I've seen that movie, but I feel like I haven't seen all of it. But I do have a favorite line in the movie where she's like really sad and crying and she was like I'm 30 and he was like no you're not and she was like I will be one day I "I don't know why I remember that but it's so true you're like 27 and you're like I will be someday I will be 30 sometime anyway uh let's see I think that Poppy is relatable to people in their 30s as far as career-wise I am not in my 30s so but I I can see a lot of people in their 30s being kind of relatable as far as uh not being happy with their job they went to school to do this one thing and now they have it and now it's like I'm not really happy with this but I'm an adult now what do I do like I can kind of see a lot of people around her age like really feeling now we have car honks really <laughs> feeling her pain <sighs> it's okay Don. one of these times we're gonna just be in a crazy studio where none of this will happen yeah My lights well are going crazy Alyssa's right husband has a great studio Alyssa talk to your man 
<laughs> that's that's what I have for likes right now. Okay. I think I have one more. I have I, one more. I, I have a few more, but <laughs> spoiler. Okay. I kind of um, done it. My last one is usually when we read adult fan or adult fiction. Like everyone is like Swapna, where they have their Burberry bang and matching, matching trench coat, and they're going on these fancy trips and all this, you know, this fancy life. And Poppy and Alex, they start off anyway as traveling on a budget, and they have to find a cheap Airbnb, and they have to rent this car, and they have all these travel problems, and they have to eat one dollar pizza, and you know, I that's kind of how real people travel. So I really did like seeing that kind of. A person who is you know they make um they're not super wealthy they have just you know a job where they can where they can afford to travel but it's not like first class or they can only do it once a year and all mm -hmm. that stuff yeah that part i actually really liked because it it and it kept being brought up too that like we don't have a bunch of money to do something like this like how can we do it on the cheap you know like we we find our own happiness on our trip and it's about the meeting new people or whatever that you meet on vacation. <laughs> exactly. Uh, last thing I really liked about this book is that I loved that Alex's and Poppy's relationship started as an actual genuine, genuine friendship. It didn't just start as like a love interest thing. They were friends from the get go. The people that they could, you could talk to them. It was a simply like, it was a, there was no chemistry whatsoever. None. And I really liked that because even though it it does grow, the growth of that was so important to them and their relationship because they really just didn't want to lose that friendship because it was such a beautiful thing that you can't find a lot of times between a guy and a girl, because especially like someone gets married or someone's really happy in a relationship so they can no longer hang out with you because why? That would be ambiguous to do something like that. You don't hang out after you're like dating someone. It's kind of like taboo Yeah. to be alone. So yeah, I really liked that. All right, that's so all that's I all I have for non-spoilers. If you are curious to continue following us along, next podcast, we're going to be talking about The Midnight Library by Max Hegg. Matt Hegg. Matt Hegg? Yeah. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Uh, we're a little bit late to the party on this particular book. However, it has gotten such raving reviews that we are curious to see what the hustle and bustle is all about over there so if you do not want to hear how this book ends and hear all of our things that we have to say now is the time to pop out thank you so much for joining us and if you want to get spoiled bye four three two one <laughs> dun 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 I could do that every single time. Dun, dun, dun. Now I know to wait <laughs> for the dun 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 before I start. <laughs> you do? Yeah. You like it a hot second. <laughs> okay, well, I have a question. What was your favorite trip that they went on? Uh... I don't think I had one because they were all kind of repetitive. I would have loved to say Tuscany, but they stayed inside and played board games. Who goes to Tuscany to play board games? You could do that at home. I was so upset. <laughs> I know. Tuscany was actually my first. They, like It would have been my first. However, I think that the, the the one where they go to Canada and they meet the <laughs> this band of young adults that are completely 
high living on life and whatever, like that was the epitome of we're young into the world. We've graduated high school and college. We're experimenting things. How did you, how, how was your makeout session? Mine was great, you know, but you know, we didn't hook up cause I don't want to do that. Well, I thought you would No, I'm, I'm okay. We're just going to hang out over here. It's fine. Like that was, I was like, that's such a best friend thing to talk about. Like, how was your evening? <laughs> but with opposite sex, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Okay. But that one in particular, I actually... I really liked. And then I liked the one where she gets so dog sick, like gets pneumonia. Yeah. And he gets on the plane and goes to take care of her. I'm like, there is good in this world. (laughs) (laughs) So, but I loved it. I mean, if, even if Alex would have been a girl, I would have still been like, yes, thanks for stepping up in your best friend shoes here. Yeah. (laughs) Um, do we want to talk about Poppy's like dislike of Lithfield, Lithfield? Yeah, and all. I, I mean, I get it. She, I think she may have been a little. I don't want to say sensitive. That's mean, but she got bullied a little bit, and she hated her school. I mean, yeah. I guess I was waiting for a big reveal that something really terrible like happened to her like they made her streak through like the cornfields or something in Ohio you know or pulled her pants I don't know some sort of big like thing that caused her to truly hate that people that's there that people (laughs) just because okay well she got hurt so bad from multiple people picking on her, it truly stunted her want to have home roots. She just wanted to escape and to be free from all of that. And then even when she's in New York and she meets one of the bullies of her childhood and she's looking at him and he is, he's got the nice dad bod going on. You can tell that he He's balding, you know, he's got all these things that he used to be this big deal. And now he's not so scary anymore. That's the best way that I could play. He's not intimidating anymore. Yeah. You know, and his first reaction to her is, I'm so sorry for making your life a living hell, basically, for all of your childhood. He's like, it weighs on me every single day. And I think to myself, like, oh, those people that actually cause harm to others, maybe it does weigh on them throughout and they've got like a guilty conscience or whatever because it's obviously affecting her and then to see that it's affecting the person who actually dished it out is like you don't usually get that you usually get the person that that it's affected and they decide to be the bigger person and just move forward with it yeah so but i did like that, that she kind of came to terms with the fact that it's not the city people were being people and they're not the same anymore <laughs> you know they're not out to get her basically yeah I mean I think it fit with the rest of the story as far as her and Alex being opposites and why you know he knew that she wanted to leave the town but he liked it there and he wanted roots somewhere but she liked to travel and get out and leave and I think that kind of made sense to the story um Mm -hmm. was it like an earth shattering theme no but i mean it made sense to the story what did you think of alex and um sarah the over or no the the girlfriend that just you couldn't get rid of i i had issues with the end because Poppy apologizes to her, but I don't know what she needed to apologize for. Like, it wasn't Mm -hmm. like Poppy was purposely being a saboteur. Because she wasn't. Like, she'd be like, so how's Sarah? And he would say something, and she'd try to get a little bit more info, and he would stop talking about it, and she would too. And it wasn't like she was like, when they were in Tuscany, she wasn't trying to make Sarah look 
like an idiot or anything. She never bad mouthed her or anything. So why did she need to apologize to her? I, I thought that was stupid, personally. And Sarah was like, yeah. Thank you for the apology. For what? It's, if, mm -hmm. if I recall, Sarah was the one who broke up with him. Probably because she knew he was hung up on this other woman. But still, like, whatever. I didn't like that. That also made me lower my rating because I didn't like that. I I agree. I thought that there was no reason for her to apologize for liking Alex because she never stood in the way of Alex breaking up with Sarah. Nope. At all. That never was there. Like, she always had good intent for him to be happy. And if Sarah made him happy, okay. I mean, she goes on and on and on. And, like, the multiple times that they broke up of, like, Sarah was a bad person for you. She didn't get you. She doesn't, you know, understand all of your different fallacies or whatever, you name it, you know, and he would still keep going back to her. So I don't think she had to necessarily apologize for liking him. But, you know, maybe if she wanted to have a clear conscience and just say, I did not think good things about you. And then for that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Or something. I don't yeah. know. But at the same time, it's like, well, is she striving for a relationship with Sarah? Or no. No. Not really. Not really. The, the moment where we have the revealing as to what happened two years ago in Croatia. What did you think it was? <laughs> So I didn't read the description of the book, which I usually don't. So I didn't know that this was a friends to lovers. I didn't know this was a romance. So I didn't either. Yeah. So when I, I started either. to realize that this, yeah, I think even before I realized that this was like a friends to lovers, I was like, okay, one of two things is the cause of their fallout. And they either kissed or something and it was like, oopsies, or one of them like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> my legs got stuck to my teeth. <laughs> I was like, one of them made a move and the other one was like, ew. Or it has to be something romantic. Because nothing else is going to make sense here. Yeah, but my thought was like a drunken, like, uh, like speech right so they okay. they went on some sort of vacation went to a winery had a bunch of different wines we're having a gay old time whatever like they used to dance together no problem this is fine there's totally no feelings attached and my thought was what happens if you go a step too far and now you've established this long relationship and sometimes when people drink, some people are emotional. So I was expecting this big emotional, like, vo word vomit of feelings. Mm -hmm. And that didn't happen. I was actually disappointed that they kissed. I was disappointed because then the build up for their big moment of when they did kiss. I was like, oh, but they've already done it before. I know. It's not the same thing. It's like the it's like the author wrote it in the wrong order. Yeah. And maybe it would have made more sense if we saw the kiss in Croatia first and then the Big Bang. But be so be so when the Big Bang happened, I, I totally thought that she was dreaming. The entire time I was like, This isn't really happening. This can't be really happening because it just kinda came out of nowhere. And I'm like, This isn't really happening and so then the next chapter I was like, Oh, no, it really did happen. Where did that come from? And then you get the, the Croatia story. I know. So, yeah. My uh, my thoughts with that were not good. No. I was not happy with that. It actually made me not as, like, satisfied in the moment you're supposed to be satisfied in because they're finally together. They're finally, like expressing their feelings towards each other and it's like oh wait a minute they've already kind of like done this it's kind of like you've already tried that pair of pants on and then someone gives it to you six months later and says here's the pants that you got but you should act surprised 
it was kind of like that <laughs> where we already knew the gift was coming i didn't know the gift was coming but in reverse oh in reverse okay. in reverse but that's like how i don't know i didn't like that i didn't like the fact that they kissed before i actually was disappointed i was hoping it was something else or i was hoping like she found out that you know Alex broke off things with Sarah, like found the ring or something like that, and he's like goodbye to her or some sort of something. But no, no, and this is why I was hoping, not hoping, but this is why I wish that there could have possibly been a point of view of Alex because we only got her longing for him and these little end of chapter heartbreak moments where she's just like they have to love him from afar and can never tell like there were some moments at the end of each chapter not each chapter but some of the chapters i was just like damn girl you are killing me with your little <laughs> sad proclamations of love here but we never <clears throat> got that from alex like i was saying in the spoiler free he didn't really give any clues like when she was looking at his body she never caught him looking at her or when he or when she was like like when she was sick and they kind of had a moment why we only got it from her perspective he kind of looked at her but then you know it it never there were there were no clues on his part so when the big moment happened it was just like oh now he wants her like where did that come from i just i didn't like it i guess i guess Okay, so did the Tinder thing happen before or after the big moment? I think it happened before. Before. It happened okay. before. I think so that may like have you, been the only clue. You kind of get a hint that he's like, yes, I would swipe for you. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, maybe he's not the stoic beast that we think he is. You know, because up until that point, I still was like, what happened? Did someone spoil something? I don't know because I did. I didn't think that they had like chemistry before. Well, in my opinion, Alex is mashed potatoes. He is just, yeah, you know, he's good. He's nice to look at. There's some butter there, but is is there any bacon? No. Is there any any, any cheese on these potatoes? No. It's just good old fashioned mashed potatoes and i'm like is it me is it me or is he kind of a snooze and there's nothing wrong with good guys but am i gonna remember this guy tomorrow no yeah. is he someone i'm gonna be like oh that guy was great no it's his cat like you know he's an admirable guy but he's kind of boring he's boring so if you're into a guy that's, I don't know, not going to ride the motorcycle without the helmet, then oh, that's cool. But I don't think Sarah liked it either. But Poppy wanted that, so I didn't, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did like the fact that this book really brought into perspective, like at least towards the end, the, you know, when you lose your joy in life, how important is it for you to go back and look for those moments when you did experience joy to the fullest and how can you alter the course of your life right now in order to maintain happiness? And that part I really liked because Poppy got everything that she wanted, right? She got the, the blog where she's writing for this awesome rest and relaxation people where she's doing all the vacations that people want to go and see and they don't even have money to pay for but they dream about like these are the vacations that we all dream about going on like if i had a little bit of money i would do this or whatever and the whole lifestyle of that is lonely you're constantly going on a vacation somewhere where you don't know anybody and if you can bring your best friend along it's kind of like it doesn't make it so bad but when she stopped being able to bring Alex along because of their issues, it got to a point where she was like, it's not worth it anymore. Having this overpriced apartment in the city that I can't pay for, really, if I continue to vacation like this, or yada, 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 all these little things. Um, I definitely liked that 
tie into this story because that also speaks to Poppy's growth in this book well, where I, she basically gave up that crazy lifestyle and then did it more on the cheaper side which I guess that was a jab at us millennials but that's fine too <laughs> I only had one issue with that where she was saying that I only made friends with the the hotel people and the waiters or whatever and i'm like because when? once again that's her whole speech at the end when she was yeah. like i'm not happy because i'm happy when we meet people on vacation that was her whole speech and then she says when i was working with r and r the only people i would meet was the chef who was giving me free food because i was writing for this blog or the hotel people and i'm like that's kind of not true because if you're writing for a travel blog, you're going to um, landmarks and where all other people are. Yes, you have a photographer, but you can certainly meet people while you're on that boat in Italy, on that gondola in Italy, or you're looking at the Eiffel Tower. Like, I kind of called bullshit on that. Like, if she was the poppy that she would supposedly be, like bubbly and friendly, she could have met people while she was there. I'm sorry, but you could have. That was a bit yeah. of a stretch for me. Yeah. Well, she was no Samantha Brown from TLC. Do you remember Samantha Brown from TLC? Where she was, was the one that would go and visit all of these places. Didn't she like eat for like $5 a day or something like that? Was no, that uh-uh. Oh, okay. She would visit all of these extravagant hotels and show you all the glorious things that you can do oh, whilst you know. you're in... You know, we'll just do Croatia for right now and all the sculptures, blah, 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 all this stuff. But she would be by herself with a crew and she would meet all of these people while on the journey. So she ain't no Samantha Brown. <laughs> exactly. And that's where it lost me. Well, it lost me at the Big Bang, but it really, it, it, this lost me too. And then what really lost me is the airport fight. Where she's, where she's just being honest and she's like, hey, I was just trying to figure out when I was happy. And, and then he just, like, it was a forced, a forced conflict. It's like Emily part, Henry yes. had to put a conflict. You have to have a big conflict somewhere in your book. She put it here, but it was forced because that argument didn't need to happen. He didn't need to blow up like that. And then he ignores her texts like he did two years ago. How old are you? Put on your big boy khakis and answer the damn phone. She's trying to reach out to you and you keep ignoring. Who? This is a 30 year old man. I'm like, are you kidding me? That pissed me off so bad when she tried so hard to communicate with him. And he, she, he just totally ghosted her twice. Twice. And then wonders why she and him are not like connecting. Because you ghosted her two years ago, dude. What is that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I was actually disappointed with when the 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 turn came, if you will. <laughs> the turn, the downfall. Because mm -hmm. it was like at 86%. I looked. I looked. <laughs> and I, like, the whole time I'm like, wow, there hasn't really been, like, a big fallout. Maybe this is just, like we're making amends and it's going to be fine or whatever. And I was like, wow, we're getting pretty close to the end of the book here. When is something going to, because that's how it is. Yeah. Stories always have that. There's always some sort of pivotal moment where it's a die, you know, ride or die. And at that moment I was like, ah, uh, no, no. Y'all were just talking just fine. And all of a sudden he's butt hurt because he really meant it. How did she not mean it? She just played girlfriend for you? No. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. And you know what else? When you were saying, when you just said that they've been talking all this time, actually they didn't. So after the Big Bang, it was hot. They went to a different hotel. They're getting ready for the wedding. And she wants to talk about it. He wants to bang some more. The whole time at the wedding, we're not talking about it. After the wedding, we're not talking about it. At no time did they have a discussion about what just happened. What mm -hmm. is that? And it's him. He's not talking. That's all I was like. He needed a POV because I needed to know what was going on in his head while this man 
basically fell out with his friend two years ago because of the kiss and then we went further in the further than a kiss and we're still not talking he's still not talking about it yeah that part made me sad where it was like after they have their big moment or whatever and they go to the other hotel because you know ac's broken and she goes in to take a shower and he falls asleep on one of the beds and she has to ask herself is it appropriate for me to snuggle up next to him? Mm -hmm. And I was like, good, yes. Yes, you do. But because he doesn't talk to her, she doesn't know. But she did know. So she's in the other bed. And then the, then the next morning, he's gone on a run. <laughs> and they still don't talk about it. All he does is shower and oh, run. God. And not talk. <laughs> and then, and then... <laughs> He gets a vasectomy after he said oh. he wanted kids and grandkids. What? What is that? <laughs> I know why he was afraid because, you know, his mom died at childbirth and he didn't, you know, he's afraid of that. But then why do you go and tell this girl that we want different things? I want a family and I want a home and you don't. Well, you just got a vasectomy, so what does that say about you? And he went and got the vasectomy the day that she thought she was pregnant, too. Not by him, but because he didn't want to be, like, put in that situation to have a mom without, you know, yeah. babies. And I was like, okay, Poor so yet again, POV from Alex would have been so beneficial to this book. And, and what about poor Sarah? He just got a vasectomy and didn't tell his girlfriend? That's probably why she broke up with him. Ain't nothing to do with Poppy. He wouldn't have got a vasectomy. I don't want kids no more. Sorry. <sighs> oh, I went and got the job done. Snip, snip. You just can't snip that. Stick that. <laughs> Speak from the office. <laughs> um, I think we've... We've exhausted all areas. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All in all, I was happy that they did not wind up, like, married in the epilogue. That they were still exploring. I will say that. Like, I was like, oh, that's not something that we're, like, used to hearing. You know, the epilogue is like, oh, they're married. They have five kids and two cats. And they live in a side cul-de-sac down the road or whatever. In Linfield. In and Linfield. she's part of PTA. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So, well, that has been our review of People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. She also has another one called Beach Read. And then I think she has some YA fantasy books, if I'm not mistaken, as well. It's like she jumped from YA to adult. I read, I read, to, sorry. I read a book by her and Brittany Cavallaro, and I did not like it. So when I saw that this was her book, I was like, ooh. Mm. But it's, it was fine. It was fine. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. We hope to catch you next time. And I just did the whole thing, so goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Always do it differently. So.